Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackYear.com. Today we're going to break down the all-new HJC ARFA 91 modular helmet. The all-new HJC ARFA 91 modular retails from 549 to 634, depending on solid or a graphic color. Please understand we don't update these videos or pricing changes only when the product itself has been completely redesigned. Who is this helmet right for? This helmet is right for any rider that is looking for a premium level modular helmet, right? So this is absolutely street only product. What comes in the box? Well, you're going to get the helmet. You're going to get the pin lock fog free inner lens, clear shield already installed, chin curtain already installed. This helmet is also able to directly integrate with the all new HJC Cena smart Bluetooth communicators. There's two levels available. We're going to break those down later on in the week. Basically, one is a little higher end than the other, and they in integrate directly into this helmet. Super low profile, very easy install. We'll co cover all that in another video. It's a great option with this helmet for sure. Helmet fit. I measure 58 centimeters on the money with an intermediate oval head shape. Their size chart calls for a size medium for me. The medium fits and feels great. It, it feels really good. The fit of this helmet is a total home run. They've done an outstanding job with it. It is also customizable. The cheek pads are all interchangeable, right, to get different thicknesses in there. The top pads have to remain the same based on the size helmet that you have. Weight. 3.95 pounds on our scale in a size medium. Sounds like a lot, right? It, you know, and for sure, the modular helmets are simply heavier. There's more going on. When you hear that number creeping up around four pounds, it makes you think for a second. And I got to tell you, when I dropped this thing on the scale in the warehouse, I was not expecting to see 3.9 because I had worn it at my desk for over an hour, right? We ride on the racetrack. I don't ride on the, on the street, you know, and I don't really, it's not a helmet that I would typically ride in. I wore it for a long time to really evaluate the fit and function of the helmet. You don't notice the weight. It is balanced very well. It felt balanced when it was in the down position. It also still felt really balanced when it was in the upward most position. A couple of standout features for this helmet. One is, look at the chin curtain. The chin curtain kind of extends and then it retracts and locks in place when you close the canopy of the helmet. You can see the design of the interior with this enhanced neck roll, that, that chin curtain, they're really trying to seal this area off. Why do they want to do that? Because that helps to keep the helmet much quieter. One of the number one places where the air and the noise intrude is in the neck roll area. They went to great lengths to sort that out. You can also see the shield, the contour at the top of the shield, that's meant to break the wind and keep it quieter. Wind tunnel testing was done on this. Ventilation. They have integrated into this one, and this is really interesting. They have brow vents on a modular helmet with a drop-down inner screen, and there's some channeling in there. We're going to show you where these wind up in the EPS. Got another large intake vent that's switchable. The action on these vents feels great. Right at the crown of the helmet. Intake vent down here uh, in the chin area. Just kind of pull out on this one. Push down there in the center is the easiest way to do it. I was doing it wrong, forgive me. This is going to bring air into the helmet and drive it up onto the shield. That's introducing ventilation into the helmet, and if you're riding without your pin lock, you're in fog possible conditions, it's going to help to demist the shield as well. Switchable exhaust vent here. That little sticker that says open, you can pull that off. You don't need to leave that there. Through the diffuser on the back, there is more exhaust vent capabilities. You can see the shape of the shell too. This was all wind tunnel test. They did it to keep it quieter and to help reduce fatigue while you're riding. The better the helmet manages the wind at 
road speed, 60, 80 miles an hour, whatever speed you might be traveling. It really helps to balance it when the arrows are good, so they spend a lot of focus on trying to improve that. Shell construction. This uses a premium shell. They've got some carbon fiber in here, some fiberglass, four shell sizes, four EPS sizes to really dial in the fit. And as I talked about earlier, they hit a home run with the fit. It feels great. Safety standards. Like all modular helmets out there, this is built to the DOT standard, which is what I would expect to see for a street helmet here in the U.S. Noise. I think the noise level of this is going to be very reasonable, especially for a modular helmet. I'm going to qualify that and say, I'm saying that based on what I see here. I'm not going to ride in this helmet. This is not the type of helmet that I would do riding. Glasses compatibility. We've got some B-roll that Tom shot with our tester glasses that we've had here at STG for a long, long time now. And they slide in. They ride exactly where I wanted them to ride. And they felt great while they were in there. Shield change and shield features. Like, let's start off with first, this is something new that HJC has brought to all of their current helmets with the drop down inner screen. The position of that drop down inner shield is fully adjustable. In order to access the switch that controls that, you need to remove this panel right here. Push down on the centrally located tab. It's going to allow you to release that cover panel, right? If you're doing the install of the Cena, you would not reuse that. That exposes this switch right here. When it's all the way in the lower position, there are three positions available. That is going to be closer to your face. If you raise it up to the one in the center, I'll show you the difference. Right about there, that last little bit, you can see that last movement right there, that is the difference. And if we go all the way to the top, you can see it's even more pronounced. Cool little feature that HJC has built into each one of their current drop-down inner screen helmets. Centrally located visor lock for this. It's just a tab on the shield. To release it, just pull out here, push down. It locks in place very easily. That does help to keep the shield sealing better. Another feature that's built into this one, if you're one of those riders that likes to use this as an open face helmet, they have a provision here to lock out the canopy. Go ahead and release it, bring it all the way up, and you're gonna push up on this red switch. When you do that, the canopy is locked in the upper place. And what they've tried to do here too is they've got this thing closer to the helmet. You know, they're trying to keep this thing really balanced, close enough to the helmet where you'll get enough airflow through there that helps to keep it more stable. And once again, this is not something I've personally verified, but, you know, I watched some of the videos and stuff that HJC had on this. It's very interesting. And they're doing that to make this easier to ride in with the canopy open. If you want to release that and go back to the modular, functionality all you have to do is push in on that little release it's right here and down it comes removing the shield from the helmet this one's pretty simple go ahead and lift the shield up all the way in the upward most position and then you're going to slide your index finger right in here pull forward out it comes you'll do the same thing on the other side off the shield comes to reinstall it, simulate that upward position, get it lined up and just put a little bit of pressure in where it drops right in place. This one's pretty easy. Watch now, this side will be tough. Anytime you do a shield change or service, I always recommend actuating it a couple of times to make sure that you've got it back on the helmet securely. Let's go ahead and remove the interior, give you a look at that. Closer look from the inside out. Pull the shield off, get the canopy in the upward most position. There are two snaps down here that attach the neck roll 
which appears to be fixed on this, and you see the reflective piping on the neck roll as well, appears to be fixed. Undo the snaps there. That will allow you to remove your cheek pads. There are three snaps holding the cheek pads on. One at the front, one at the top, one at the back. You're gonna to wanna to slide your fingers in between the backing for the cheek pad and the EPS of the helmet. You can release each of the three snaps and you'll see what they've done here is they have the safety strap actually routed through the cheek pad itself. Kind of a unique design. The cheek pads on this helmet, like I mentioned that earlier, they are compatible with each size available. So if you want to tune the fit of the helmet in the cheek pad area, you are free to do that. To remove your top pad, there are two snaps here at the back. Release those and then come up here. There's a tab that's stitched to the top pad. You need to release it from this channel. Sometimes you can just pull back. Other times you have to get like a little screwdriver or your fingernail. Pull out on the tab a little bit. Out comes the top pad. Let's take a quick look at that. Premium fabrics here, all moisture wicking, antibacterial, all the good stuff. Quality looks fantastic. I'm gonna say again, the thing feels great when you have it on. Not even a modular helmet guy and I was impressed by this thing. There are closeout panels that are installed in the speaker pockets on both sides, one on the right, one on the left. If you install a Bluetooth device, these would not be reinstalled. The speakers would then live in those pockets. Let's go ahead and look inside the helmet. So here are the channels for those brow vents. So it's channeled through the EPS right there. You can see all the ventilation on the top, all the channeling in the EPS. They want long lengths here to make sure that they're moving a really good amount of air through this modular helmet, even with having the drop down inner screen. Got your speaker pockets up here at the front of the helmet. Uh, you've got uh, your, your boom mic. You know, it can be run from either side. Attachment right there with a the modular, you use a boom mic. These HJCs come with both a button mic for a full face and a boom mic, which, which is what you would use here on your modular helmet. So those kits are all complete. They integrate directly into this. I like what I see. This is well executed. That whole ARPA series for HJC, I remember when they came out with the ARPA at several seasons back now, and you just see the evolution of it all the way through. Every time they release a new model, they're taking steps forward, and you see that here with this modular helmet, just like you do with the full face helmets. Got any questions? Leave those in the comments section of this video. I answer all that stuff myself. I'm always here to help you choose the right helmet for your next ride.